Hey everyone, it's Jennifer McGuire. Today I have a couple baby cards for you, a boy version and a girl version. And then I just have some random tips and tricks and new products that I found that I'm going to share throughout the, the video. So here are the two cards that I've created, a boy version on the left and a girl version. They're clear cards, but I wanted to start by showing you first that panel in the center. That panel in the center is a three by four inch piece with rounded corners, and I actually created that very quickly with a new tool that I found. This is the We Are Memory Keepers card punch. Here's a closer look at it. The top actually pops off, and then you take it, it's got these strong magnets in it. You take any paper that you want, put it right in there wherever you want it to punch through, put the top on, it just sucks right onto it with the magnets, and then press down, and you easily and quickly get this three by four inch rounded corner piece. Now this is great because that piece fits perfectly in the center of a note card, so it's great for card making. Now this is also really fantastic for scrapbooking and project life because it fits in little pockets. Now the nice thing about this is say you have a pattern paper where you, where you want a certain part of it punched out, or say a photo. I'm going to use this just as an example. You can look through, see I'm just centering it where exactly where I want it, put the pieces together, and then punch, and you can have the piece perfectly punched out. It'd be harder to kind of cut and round the corners and get it nice and centered. So this tool is a great one, especially for us card makers. So now I'm going to go ahead and show you how I created those pattern paper strip. You see that strip there with the little diagonal pieces of pattern paper? This is a great way to use up some scraps you may have. If you've ever taken any of my online card classes, you'll know that I'm a big fan of what I call scrap bundles. Um, I talk more about this in the class, but what I do is when I find some pattern papers that I think go good together, I keep a clip on them so that I can easily create a card later on and not have to search for papers. So this is a scrap, pun uh, scrap bundle that I had. I'm going to take out this one paper here, but I'm going to use little strips of these pieces of paper to create that fun piece that you see on the card. So I'm holding a couple of the pieces together and cutting just quarter inch strips from this. I'll just cut a couple from each and then I'll have enough to create several baby cards at once. I really like to do this with scraps, kind of keep them bundled together so I can easily create a card anytime I need one. Now if you aren't good at putting pattern papers together, which I'm not very good at, what you can do is uh, what I did for the boy card here. All four of these pieces are from the new, uh, new Lawn Fawn 6x6 paper pad. So if they all come together in a paper pad, then I know they go together good, which really saves me a lot of time. So I just grab four pieces out of the 6x6 paper pad, and I'm going to use these on the boy version of this card. So I'm just going to cut a bunch of strips from these two. I'm going to make a few more boy cards than I am girl cards, so I'll cut a few extra pieces from this. Now to make your little diagonal pa pattern paper strip, this is what I do. I take just a piece of cardstock and I'm covering it with adhesive. You could use glue stick if you wanted to save on things here. And I'm just going to cover it with adhesive and then I'm going to start putting the strips on it in a diagonal way here. So I'm just going to just randomly do this, stick one down. And I don't need much here so I'm just going to keep the other half to put on when I get higher up here. I'm just going to go ahead and start applying the, card or the pattern paper strips in a diagonal way. After I've covered up the paper with the diagonal strips, I'm just going to cut away the extras that are hanging off the edge. You could do this with scissors or with your trimmer. Now this I'm going to cut strips from, but you could die cut this. There's many things that you could do with this, and this is a great way to use up your scraps. So after I've trimmed off the extra, I'm just going to go ahead and cut this in like, th I think I did about 3 eighths of an inch wide pieces. And that's just enough to add a little interest to the card, but not be too distracting from the greeting that I'm going to have on it. Now while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and make some boy cards here. It seems that I have one friend who just had a baby girl and I have a bunch who had some baby boys. So I'm going to go ahead and make the boy cards while I'm at it. Now do the same thing. Go ahead and trim out some strips here and look at I have enough for several baby cards. Now this next product is something fun. I'm, it's a glitter tape. It's called sparkle tape. And I'm here gluing it on, but I later figured out that you can actually peel the backing off and it's self-adhesive, which I'll show you later on. But here I just glued it down. I, I was kind of uh, slow to the draw there. I didn't realize that. Then I'm just going to cut the extra off by cutting around these rounded corners. Now this sparkle tape gives some shimmer and like the look of glitter, but it's very smooth and it. But there's no way that it can rub off. So this is a great way to get the look of glitter without the mess, and it's actually a little more subtle, so it's not as ostentatious. So I'll go ahead and glue the pattern paper strip down and trim the ends off. So now it's time to do some stamping. I wanted to use a mix of colors, but I wanted them to match my pattern paper as well. So I got out my ink swatch ring here, and I just picked out the inks that seemed to match those pattern papers the best. This is a great way to save time by having an ink swatch ring. And I've picked some various Hero Art shadow inks. So I've got Green Hills Tide Pool, uh, let's see, I have Soft Apricot, and then the New Silver, which is a nice pigment ink. 
I'm using this new stamp set from Simon's Stamp. It's fabulous. It's got lots of little words that are great for a baby. And I'm going to arrange them onto this card that I've punched. Here's a little trick that I did that I like to do. When I'm trying to arrange some stamps and figure out where they go, I put a piece of acetate down, just any kind of clear piece, and I arrange everything on it. That way I can kind of shift it and move it around and figure out where I want this to end up when I start creating. So I've laid everything out on this acetate piece. Now watch, I can move it around and decide where I want to position. I could even rotate it if I want to. This is just a great way to kind of help with planning. So once I've decided, I'm going to uh, start doing the stamping. Now you'll notice I put a little die cut there. That's also from Simon Says Stamp. And I've just kind of temporarily adhered it there so I can do my stamping around it. I'm not real sure what color I want that die cut to be yet. But I'm going to do a mix of colors for stamping these little greetings around the die cut. I really like stamp sets that have a lot of words in them or sentiments so that you can do a variety of things like I'm doing here where I just put a bunch of stamping around a die cut. So I'll just continue and stamp all of these words. And after I did that, I decided I needed something a little bit stronger to kind of finish off the side of that card. So I added this stitched piece here. So I just took a piece of gray cardstock and ran it through my sewing machine right along the edge. And then I'm going to take my trimmer and just trim this down into a thin strip. The reason I sewed right onto the cardstock and not right onto my project is I wasn't sure that I wanted the stitching. Uh, so this way is easier. I can move it around if I want to. So I just glued this strip down and I'll cut the ends. I like when the string kind of frays at the end. You could tape it down if you wanted to, but I kind of like the string kind of sticking off. It reminds you that it's handmade. Now before I move on to putting these cards together, I'm going to jump back and show you the tape, that, that glitter tape. And here is how you can just peel the backing off and stick it right down where you want. Sorry, I didn't realize that before when I did the first card, but I realized it before I did the girl version of this card. And you can just fold the backs down, so it's kind of like a glitter washi tape. It's fabulous. It's nice and thin too. So I'm just going to cut these corners, and you can see it's much easier just to stick this down as I did here. Then for this one, I'll add the pattern paper strip that I created from the girl uh, pattern, mix of pattern papers. And then I'm ready to quickly make a girl card. So I have all the products out, so it's real easy to make more than one card at once. Now for the girl card, I just wanted to show you the ink colors that I used. I used the silver once again, but this time I used the mint julep and fresh peach inks. So I only used three inks this time, but these were the ones that seemed to match best with the pattern papers I have. If you don't have a bunch of different ink colors, you could always just use markers to ink up your stamp. Now I wanted to show you how I did this die cut here. The, for the little word baby, it was a real detailed, delicate die, and I wanted it to stand up a little bit. So here's a trick that I do. I actually die cut three of them, and I left two of them kind of in the paper, in the negative space, and put some adhesive on the back. Glue stick would be easier here. I just use my regular adhesive, and I put adhesive on the back of some of them, on the back of two of them. I'm going to peel it off, and this one has glue on the back. I'm going to stick this right on top of the first die cut. So I'm just layering three of these together, and it gives a little dimension to this die cut. And especially with real dainty, de delicate die cuts like this one, giving it some depth, depth really makes a difference in making it pop up from the card. And you could definitely not put foam dots behind this tiny piece. So after I've got this one put together, I'll take the third one off. It's got some glue on the back and stick that right on top also. And there we have a die cut that just has a little more depth to it. It's almost like a chipboard piece, but much more delicate than any chipboard you could get. So after I've done this on both of the pieces and glued them down, decided I wanted a few hearts, so I just die cut some from the Simon Says Stamp little mini heart die, and just going to add these on with glossy accents. Uh, two works here. Usually I do three, three little hearts, but this time I felt two worked because I have the pattern papers on the other side. Now sometimes I get some glue kind of sticking out the side of my die cuts. I have this tool that is from EK Success. It's an adhesive eraser. It's got this nice pointy tip. Makes it real easy to go in and erase any adhesive that might be sticking around. Next I wanted to do the stamping on the background of the clear note cards. So I'm using two Hero Arts new cling background stamps. This one's a tiny star background. And I'm using Stays on White Ink. Now Stays on White Ink is great for stamping on acetate because it ends up being really bright white against the clear backdrop. No other ink will really dry very well on there and give as good of results. So after I've inked it up, I'm going to go ahead and take my note card and carefully uh, press it right down onto the ink. Now this, hero, this is a Hero Arts acetate note card. It's nice and thick and is great as a note card. So I'm going to hold one hand still while I press the other around. You've got to be real careful. This ink is kind of messy and you don't want to get it on your hands and smear it around. 
Now once I take this off, I'm going to let this dry on its own for a while. If you take a heat gun to it, you might warp it, so it's best just to leave it to dry on its own. After it's dried, I'm going to go ahead and put my card together. So I'm going to start by adding the piece right onto the front. Just try to center it up as best as I can. Now, if I open this card now, you see the back of this piece on the inside of the card, and you'd see the adhesive. So one of the things you want to do with clear cards is to hide your adhesive. So I went ahead and punched uh, three more of the same cards. I'm going to take one and adhere it right into the inside back of the card to hide the adhesive that's showing through from the front. And then I'm going to do the inside of the card. So I'm going to take this piece, hold it lined up with the other with the adhesive side up, and then press the card closed on it. And that way I can be sure that it's lined up nicely. That will be the spot where I can write the message to um, whoever I'm sending this to. And that will be the inside of the card. Now this last one's going to go on the back of the card just to hide the adhesive and also give you a spot where you can say, you know, handmade by Jennifer on there if you wanted to. Now if you've watched any of my videos lately, you'll know that I'm addicted to my Wink of Stella clear glitter pen. Just, just kind of paint it right on and you add a little bit of shimmer to that die cut and it just kind of catches the eye. So there you have a couple baby cards, a boy and a girl version, and just a few little tips and tricks along the way and some fun new products. If you have any questions, please head over to my blog at jennifermaguireinc.com. Thanks for watching, and if you want to know what supplies I use, you can check the bottom of the YouTube description. See you next time.